हेलो एवरी वन सो टूडे लेट अस स्पेंड सम टाइम ऑन बिहेवियर एंड आई हैव मेड फ्यू वीडियोज ऑन बिहेवियर नॉट फ्यू वीडियोज आई हैव मेड मोर देन फ्यू वीडियोज ऑन बिहेवियर एंड देर वॉज अ रिक्वायरमेंट डेट आई वॉज वर्किंग ऑन वेयर आई हैड सम कंस्ट्रेंट्स आई मीन लाइक वेन आई से कंस्ट्रेंट्स आई हैड सम प्रॉब्लम्स वेयर आई बेसिकली was trying to solve uh, this this requirement where uh, i had to use jira and uh, the requirement is that when you are using jira you are trying to let us create a new story there was some dynamic uh, feature needed on uh, on the on the issue on the create issue uh, screen so let us say when you are trying to create a new story of course you can fill up a form and uh, it is great right simple form to raise a story but imagine you have a field called text field now this field is a text field where uh, you can type whatever you want right so basically there is no like uh, control on this particular field which is fine i mean that is how it is uh, designed it's a text field so this is a story now when you create this uh, story you will be able to of course look at the text field and you can of course come back and modify it which is great but the problem is or the the, the problem or the challenge i had was that i wanted to uh, limit what users can uh, enter in this particular field so uh, of course you can't do that easily because it's a text field i mean if you want to limit the selection then you should be using a uh, a single select list but the problem is my my main biggest worry was that i was not allowed to create a, a single select list uh, and that is fine because the requirement is not to report re really heavily or rely on this particular text field to report or create some uh, reports to show some pie charts but at the same time we wanted some control on uh, what will go into this field so to solve this problem if it is not like mission critical but you still want to enhance the experience or control things that will go into this field maybe you want to give your users like a limited options that they can select from you can actually use behaviors and it is very simple all you need to do you need to basically create a behavior so i'll go to my script now and when you create a new behavior you can give it a name let us say create a story form and when you create a behavior you should also limit where this behavior is going to be applicable so limit it on the project let us say the project name is scrum and at the same time uh, you you should also limit it to the issue type maybe i just wanted to happen on story so do that and then add the mapping and uh, then click on the create button so when you have this uh, behavior you can add this initializer uh, script and here you can type in uh, the script it's a simple script to be on, to be honest maybe two lines three lines so let us do that so the field is uh, let us say text field so i'll uh, declare a variable and uh, i will enter the field name which is i know text field yeah great now i want to do something with this particular field so all, all you need to do is uh, you need to make sure that uh, this particular field is uh, is basically using a uh, this on this particular field you have to use this method convert to single select list now this particular method you have to pass in like i mean ideally you want to use this field if uh, the values that you want to display in this particular field will come from let us say outside or maybe within, within jira so the source could be different and by the way if you go to script runner or documentation you will find some examples but what i'm trying to do today is i'm trying to like simplify it and what i'll do i'll probably give the options here itself so you can actually do something like a set a uh, field options and uh, this will of course take one uh, argument a map and map is something like this where maybe you want to display the user uh, maybe the names some names right so you can say that okay uh, let, maybe the first option is none so you can uh, you can have none here right and uh, uh, when you create a map the first 
uh, on, I mean, on the left hand side, you have to specify the value that will be stored. And uh, on the right hand side, you have to specify the actual option or, or label, not, I mean, value and then label, right? So let us say the second option is, uh, let us say we're trying to select operating system. So maybe Windows 10 and the, and the label is uh, Windows 10, right? And uh, maybe I can uh, elaborate this further. The other option could be Windows 11 and then uh, 11, yeah, 11, yeah, fine. And Windows with space and 11. Maybe the third option is, fourth option is uh, Arch Linux. That is what I use. And uh, colon. Maybe you want to create a variable for this. <laughs> it's getting too long. And that is it. Okay, let us save it. And uh, let us see how it works. Let us see how this will behave on the issue screen, on the create issue screen. So if you click on the create button on top, you can of course see that we have this form. Um, story. And when you try to select your uh, text field, it is no longer a simple text field. It is a, it is in reality a text field, but when you select here something, it will be basically saved. And when you look at the value, it is actually Windows 10. But uh, I mean, the the, the the value that is I mean the, the value is Windows 10, but uh, to the end user, it is displayed as uh, the label that you. Uh, have on the right hand side of your variable on the map so yeah a simple thing right very useful but but good thing about this behavior is that when you, when you click on it it is still uh, applicable so you are basically in a way limiting uh, maybe we don't really need none here but uh, okay uh, we have it but now you know how to do it and uh, this is of course going to solve I think some problem so I think the none appears twice. Maybe we don't really need it uh, in the variable. Let us remove it from here. And uh, because we already have none, or maybe we need to uh, figure out how to handle this situation where you have uh, none again, uh, displaying again. Oh, maybe we need none. Anyways, I'll just add, because I don't really want this to be default. I want people to be able to just leave it uh, as blank okay none save and uh, let us try again to create this uh, story and we have none displayed here which is great and uh, if I keep it as none and if I go to the issue I don't really think the field should display anything because uh, it is uh, uh, empty but if I go back to the field and if I select something so now I think it is working it looks all right I'm not really sure why earlier when you when you try to uh, when I tried to select none was appearing twice okay this is a bit weird anyways I'm not really sure about this none thing like why it is up coming up twice uh, but but I guess you get you get the idea and it works kind of it works and uh, in reality, as I mentioned, you need to make sure that you are uh, populating this particular field with values that are coming from outside Jira or maybe within Jira. Maybe you want to uh, have like some issues displayed here. So you can actually write like some Ajax based. You, you, you can find it in the documentation, some Ajax uh, query where uh, it will uh, retrieve uh, issues from JQL and then you can uh, uh, pick the issue key something like that to be displayed in the list and uh, and users can select it. So it is actually going to enhance the experience or uh, in a way help you uh, in reporting. Again, if you don't use really use this part all the time because you should be using a select list. And uh, one small tip is that whenever you're trying to create a select list or any field in Jira, not just select list, uh, you have to make sure that uh, the uh, names are not too specific to one project. Try to use like generic names wherever applicable so that uh, you don't really end up with 3000 custom fields and yes that happens a lot all right that is it 
that is all i wanted to talk about in this video i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new thank you very much bye bye